Namaste. Welcome everyone to Satsang today here in Rishikesh. Thank you. Also, welcome to all of you who are joining uh, from wherever you are around the world uh, by broadcasting. Um, welcome uh, to today's Satsang. So, good, good. Good, good, good. Let's start with you first. Okay? Yeah, yes, sir. It's okay. Namaste. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, I've got no time. Um, there has been many lifetimes and many years in this life, and there has been a fear to stand in front of you, um, um, and I won't have it. I won't, le I won't let this fear. Um, I won't yield in any postponement. Very good. Yeah, I'm very happy to hear that. So am I. Um, actually, I don't. Uh, I don't see why there would be a fear yeah. to. Uh, stand in the eyes of truth, uh -huh. if this is what I am looking for. Yes. Uh, well, actually, actually, um, uh, often this is where fear comes, unexpectedly. We would think that if you have made a choice, or it's arisen in your heart, a choice for freedom and to find truth, that the universe, in, in all of its expression, would support this. But it looks like, initially, uh, resistance comes from yeah. somewhere. Mm. Resistance is coming from where it is coming, then? Is it the universe is sending resistance? It is actually coming out of the, the, seeker's, uh, uh, the seeker's presence, in some way. I, I'll, I'll need a little moment to explain that. Because it's such a common phenomenon, hmm? totally unexpected, that you are searching for truth. Human beings are searching for so many, many things. Eh? And we get encouragement, we get even inspiration to search for them. Perishable things, perishable things, things that won't last. And it seems like some energy or people come to encourage you, go, go for it. But uh, unexpectedly, when it arises in the heart of a human being to search for the truth of their own self, resistance comes. Why? We want to know. Why would resistance come? So this is experienced as a kind of shock for some people, like, why is my mind behaving like this? And what happened is that in learning to and becoming a human being, starting with the pure consciousness, the sense, I am, the untaught way in which you intuitively and spontaneously know you exist, the first knowing, you see? Uh, somehow from there comes a projection further to identify with the instrument, the body, and the senses and the mind, which are needed in order for consciousness to taste diverse experiencing. So there is no experiencing without duality. The interrelated opposites are a necessary part of experiencing. We cannot know something to be good unless we have a sense of something to be bad. 
or if something is cold, we cannot say this is cold unless we have a measure of what it means to be hot. So duality is very much at the very heart of experience. However, when we have identified somehow the identification with the instrument, I am this body, and later on the conditioning, the environment in which the body is growing is contributing also to the impression that is formed about who we are. And nobody stops it, nobody interferes with that. You know? Even those who love us is part of supporting that conditioning. You are this person, you are like that. Who to blame? It's like, oh, who to blame? Who not to blame? It happens, all the beings, we have some conditioning in the beginning. Conditioning. But we must transcend the, the influence of conditioning as we grow. That is called spiritual, I would say, maturing, that we wake up because we inherit this sense of personhood, which is when the consciousness, which is not personal, identifies with the body and its environment, and then the sense I becomes I me, like personal. And there is the birth of the person. The birth of the body is not the birth of person. The birth of the body is for the instrument uh, for consciousness to express through. The person is born when the seed idea, I am this person, I am the body and my conditioning, the person comes out of it. The person is also a mode of consciousness, but it is a very limited uh, uh, mode, because it is identified with a particular body, which somehow it's meant to, it's compelled to do that for a while, and to a specific kind of flavor of environmental conditioning. And then comes uh, social conditioning, religious conditioning, political conditioning, racial conditioning, all of those things pile on top of the first conditioning, which, if I may say, is I also. The I that comes uh, from the I am. Please stay with me because it's not easy to repeat that. No? Mm. The first knowingness arises as the intuition, the sense I am, which denotes consciousness. I, consciousness, I'm here, announcing itself in the body. When Sri Ramana Maharishi said, the I removes the I, yet remains I, that that is the paradox of uh, self-realization, what he means, how many eyes are there? <laughs> what he means is the original I, the I which is the, of the form of consciousness, removes uh, the false I, which is the I-me person, it transcends, it overcomes the influence and the limitation of the I me person, and then rests back again in its original I amness. Can we follow this? Can you relate to that? Yes. Because it's very important now at this stage of our um, looking and exploring over these few uh, weeks that this is firmly grasped, not merely as an idea or a mental construct, but uh, a foundation to our uh, search. You know? So this is our the sense of person. Therefore, I repeat again, when the Master said that the I removes the I, yet remains the I, if we just hear that, we, everyone would be confused on what, what, which I is which I. But he's saying that the I am, uh, which is our name, actually. Before we took I am George, the I am, uh, which is not George, which means consciousness, hmm, inherit George when it identifies with the body, the instrument that it needs in order to have the taste of experiencing. Huh? So then it becomes the I, me, person feeling. And then throughout the, the, the duration of what we call a lifetime, that consciousness will live in this body, express in the body, it is expressing through the mode, I am this person, which is such a limitation. 
However, we know that beings are experiencing at different levels of maturity. Some have overcome that ignorance, I'm going to call it ignorance, and realize again that they are just a consciousness. And that's not a mental realization. It is not merely an intellectual conviction. It is an experiential fact. And thereafter, their lives uh, flourish and bear, and bear witness to the beauty of the um, unpolluted consciousness. For this reason, uh, we are holding satsang. Did I explain that to some clarity? So then you understand uh, at least the mechanism of how the sense of personhood eclipsed the consciousness, which hasn't gone anywhere, it is still here. It eclipses it, but for who? For the sense of the person it takes itself to be. You see? Then it is fascinated with its own creative projections and imagination, that of the person. So in effect, I can say, the idea we as consciousness have of ourselves, the idea we have of who we are, is suffering from ideas it has about itself. Yes. How to come out of that, you see? Well, bear in mind that even when we are under some hypnosis of conditioning, our original identity, our, not, I don't want to call it identity, our original truth remains unpollutable. It is like a mask has been put over it, and this mask is, I am this person. Mm. And the belief that arises in this, um, what would I call it now? It's like a living mask, in some way. And now, uh, as long as we are wearing this mask, the life will not be fulfilled in the complete sense. And we are happy to settle for that, actually. Because even within the limited range of the expression of personhood, it's very vast, because it has the taste of consciousness. There are so many things we can learn with the face of personhood, so many experiences we can have. And as soon as we identify personally, it's as though we become attached to and addicted to consciousness and identity. How to come out? Even the idea of coming out takes a while to appear to us. It must have appeared to you in order for you to be here also. Yes. So now how to go further than this also? And then over these time we have been looking together, looking together and uh, uh, checking in as the position or the, of the place that we are looking for, from, as that changed, are we always compelled to be looking from the perspective and the position of personhood? No. Then it comes a realization that even the position of personhood is also observable. Then I ask you, do you realize the importance of that? If personhood itself is a state that is observable, then the original place of the observing must be beyond that limitation, isn't it? Yes. So, is this just merely mental, or is it very practical, is it? Not mental. Gotcha. When you're in the position to see, to observe, not just the function, not just the functioning, but the sense of the identity who claims it is doing the functioning, when you are in the position to recognize that, no? Are you trapped in the functioning? No. Ah, so. Have we come to this place? Yes. yes. With secure understanding, you see? Is this a position of, uh, is it varying or is it constant? You see? Meaning, the position whereby all is perceivable, not just through the physical eyes, 
but through the power of perceiving. Hmm? When uh, the range of potential for seeing is in front, everything is perceivable through the senses, the mind, through consciousness. When you can acknowledge, I am that which is perceiving all this, or even not say, let's say, in substitute this I and say, can there be any perception, can there be anything known without consciousness? No. Can anything appear and be perceived to appear without consciousness? No. No. And who knows this? It must be the consciousness in the form of the sense I also. You can say, I, 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 I can confirm this. So this I and consciousness, they are synonymous. Too many words? No. No. Good, good, good. So you can come to that very powerful place of confirmation through sober seeing. Not necessarily emotional, it's, it's not produced necessarily out of an emotional state. Uh, even an emotional state is also perceived in this light. So we cannot paint that which sees all this with the brush of personhood. It is beyond. Yesterday, I felt it was a very good uh, um, uh, metaphor and, uh, and maybe exercise when I say all that, if we could sit, consider all our feelings, all the objects of perception, the mind, thought, all that is perceivable to be on the screen called consciousness. Okay? Including the sense of yourself and your relationship and the things you have to do and your dreams and memories and aspirations and attachment. Everything is the play appearing on the screen of consciousness. Can we start like that again? Yes. And let's say you are also having the experience of being in the game as well. Yes, yesterday I went to this place, this afternoon I'm going to this place, I'm doing this and so on. You have that experience. You have it also. Hmm? Uh, but now if I say, what about if you are also off screen? You are also off screen. So everything that appears, even the subtlest of feelings, whatever has a taste uh, that can be perceived or sensed, is on the screen. Hmm? Including the one who is tasting, hmm, very nice, I want this. That is also perceived. And uh, you are also off screen. You are on screen and off screen. Can you connect with this one? Yes. So, off screen, if you can perceive everything the feelings, the emotions, the dreams and aspirations, the memories are all on screen. What is it that's off screen? Whatever has a form or a shape is on screen, meaning as quality. It's discernible. It has some attributes. It is discernible. That which is perceiving all of these things, can that be identified phenomenally? No. So, what can you say of yourself? If you are on the screen, if you are on the screen, hmm, then you are living in a very busy world with them. Everything is moving. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I am trying to get over there, that part of the world. I am trying to do. I've got to escape, but your escape is also another place in the world. Maybe the great escape is to wake up to the fact that you are off screen also. Maybe it's not enough. It it is clear. Um. Experientially. Mm.
maybe the question um, is, what is, um, I'd like really to check in the inner positioning. What is, um, I, I, okay. Take your time. It's something like the difference between um, being aware and being as awareness. Ah. Um, yes. The, as long as there persists the, the identification with personhood, the sense of being a practicer or a doer or a seeker will persist. So the sense that, you know, if you ask, you some, sometimes people say, oh, I, for a while I was not conscious of being conscious, or something like that. Like it is uh, through um, some subtle effort that we feel, yes, now I'm aware that I am the consciousness itself. And I may ask you, is consciousness part-time? And you say, no, no, it's not part-time. How you know this? Uh, I just know it, no? Like that. At some point, actually, uh, just like what? What is your name at present? My name? Yes. Funny, you should ask that. My yeah. name is Laurence. Laurence. And okay. I actually wanted to ask you to give me a spiritual name. Okay. Well, later, this, later, later. This vibration doesn't. Okay. Uh, okay. Mm. Yes. So, okay. <laughs> so Laurence for now. Okay. Uh, you know. <laughs> Now, sorry. <laughs> but grace is amazing, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the name was given uh, Laurence. Mm. Uh, when the child came as a baby, it did not come. It was not uh, born with the name Laurence no. on the forehead. God said, "Call this baby Laurence." It came. Somebody thought about the name, and someone offered the name. Uh, and uh, it was, uh, the child didn't accept it. Mm -hmm. Maybe the parents, maybe mother and father say, should we call it Lorraine? No, no, Laurence. No, 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 Laurence. Okay? So the, the choice was given. The name was offered, the was, child was baptized or whatever with this name. And for a while, this name didn't mean anything to you. No. It was just a sound or something. And then at some point, <clears throat> Uh, the consciousness was uh, su su sufficiently mature to accept the impression of a name and to remember it. Because, generally speaking, a child is growing up, maybe um, uh, if it goes playing and it gets lost, uh, 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 and someone says, you know, what is your name? You may say, boy. Mm. Where do you live? House. Maybe the details haven't come yet. So sometimes the parents write the name, put it in the pocket, just in case. At some point, even this body, we were not yet used to uh, using body. Even earlier time, maybe as an as a infant, you wanted to pull something, but you couldn't get the body to yeah. do it. <laughs> then you didn't feel you are the body also. No. Did not feel. When you got used to moving and controlling the machine, then it was more easy to accept, I am this body. And also, the consciousness that holds the impression of the name is forgotten about and the name is remembered. Thereafter, if somebody, if you are walking down the road and someone says, Hey, Larry! You would not, you keep on going down the road. If somebody say, uh, Laurence, uh, did you remember that you are Laurence? It's just there, and yet you're not carrying the memory, I am Laurence, I'm Laurence, I'm not Lorraine, I'm Laurence. <laughs> no, you're not physically remembering, you're not actively trying to remember, but in an instant it's mentioned, something goes, yes. So look how amazing it is that we can remember a name which is not original to you, not original to you, but the consciousness which caused and allowed the name to be remembered 
that nobody knows the consciousness. Everybody forget the consciousness. Yet without the consciousness, even the name Laurence could not be remembered. This is why I said something once. I said, I am. Before the idea that I could forget myself or that I need to remember myself was believed. Mm. It's very, very subtle to say these things, you see. Now, all of this is addressing something that you say, you see, that somehow we have to be remembered that we are conscious. And so, you know, sometimes we forget that we are consciousness, and then in that mode, we are remembering ourselves to be person. And we are acting from the place of person without the consciousness that we are conscious. You, you follow this? I'm sorry, it's very subtle, but it's a very important thing. Then at some point, uh, you will, through practice and through being reminded in satsang, you'll come to know that actually I don't have to try to be awareness, I cannot not be awareness. And that becomes so obvious, it cannot be forgotten. It's not in the realm of remembering and forgetting. Just the fact that you are is the evidence that the consciousness is here. <clears throat> then does consciousness have to remember itself, unless it takes itself to be something else like a person? Mm. Then when it takes itself to be something like a person, then it has to be reminded again, but you are consciousness, why are you behaving like a person? Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> like this, until you don't have to remember anymore. <laughs> it, it is obvious. And yes. life has had recently amazing ways to remind me, in a yes. way. I had, like, can I tell this little, very little mm. story? Uh, um, I had built a host, uh, hotel, I don't know how you say, um, well, honoring my being, and there was a picture of you mm. above it. And I sent the picture of this host, hostel, I don't know how you say in English. Hostel, it's not a Hostel, uh, to a friend, and her three year old daughter wanted to speak to me as I was on the phone with my friend. And she said, I really like your hostel, and Muji is you. Right. She did say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I was here, I went to Papaji's tree. And after meditating under the tree, I, was, I started looking for my bag. And I saw this bag, which looked like it, but it was a bit different, and I couldn't really understand. And at some point, a man came and he said, are you looking for your bag? And I said, yes. And he said, it's on your back. And I burst out laughing. <laughs> because this is, and to me, this is, uh, um, to be as awareness itself is something like that. Yes. Um, that cannot be. But uh, it's not a but. It's, I really want, um, um, experientially to confirm that place where I come to, I think I'm making it far more complicated than it is. It's good that you're noticing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is also the evidence as the consciousness is becoming more uh, refined, that that is in front of you and you're watching that. You say, actually, we don't need to go down this road. Let's cut that. This is to do with your own uh, if effectiveness in as a consciousness itself. So basically, if you're caught in an action, really involved in the action itself, is it that you're, and is it that, that you're distracted and caught in the action, or that the, is there a need to be aware at the same time? If you are caught in an action, intensely in an action, and someone call you. Uh, Lorraine, or they call it Laurence, uh, will you not remember that you are Laurence? You, you are imagining that you get so caught up that you forget that the uh, sense of caught upness is only also a play arising in that space. Now, I'm saying you, an important point, when I say that you will not forget that you are Laurence, and you will not be remembering that you are Laurence. You just are. Okay. You see? So this understanding that I'm finding, 
that as soon as it's clear that it's consciousness, not in the mind, that thoroughly experientially confirmed. And still after that, the mind will still be coming for a while, and it is good. It will test your discernment, and you'll somehow be exercising your, your checking in and checking out. And gradually after a while, it's no more effort, it is there. It is good that mind come, the sense of personhood come, some impression from the past come, some remnant of some identity come, and then it's quickly detected and discarded like that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So those seeming mistakes are also very helpful for you. They are uh, spiritual vitamins, they are strengthening you in your discernment still. At some point, you won't be concerned about any of that. Okay. Natural functioning is happening, and uh, in the space of the non happening, which is your original nature. Mm. And, mm. You are in some way uh, zero within your own self. Don't tell anybody, nobody can understand. But it is clear. Yes. Functioning is taking place, and somebody will say, Wow, you know, if uh, you don't say anything to anyone, everyone will think that somehow you are the best functioning. But you don't know how you're functioning, just functioning is taking place. Yes. Without the, without the, what I would say, the mischief of the personal mindset. Yes. Because that would have been bleeded, bled off, that will be thinning away. So your actions, your activities are much more imbued with consciousness and so much more fluid. Your presence also, the presence you are, also carry the fragrance of that pure consciousness. More peaceful, more content, open, mm. uh, uh, so very alive in your still stillness, and yet you are doing nothing at all, actually. Mm. The prayer really is, there few words, merge me in you. Yes. That's the prayer. Yes. Truly. Yes. And um, there is also a knowing that even though it is obvious, I, uh, there is this knowing that I haven't fully um, realized what I have discovered. Something knows. Yes. And um, I accept that uh, that that feeling has come from somewhere, and it is also good, to an extent, it could be seen to be good, that we don't become complacent, mm. that uh, the attention still is hot in in looking, uh, until whatever mischief, whatever play of distractedness, uh, settles in and merges in its own source. Mm. Yeah. When in silence, mm. uh, I'd like also to check in with this. When in silence, after the playing, uh, the, the um, observing, observing distraction towards the thing that is being observed, mm. coming back, at some point. Um, Listen, silence is synonymous with the self, not when in silence. If I have to cooperate with your way of looking, then we, have to, we are making a date for awakening. You are that which is constantly, always is. Everything else is like clouds passing. Even the idea of yourself as you know, becoming more clear about this is watched from that awareness itself. It's immediately known. Mm. Awareness cannot be practiced. Even the practicing to become more aware is observed in awareness itself. I've got to give you the call on that one. You see? Mm. <laughs> Somehow I know, mm. but the, oh, no, but I like it. This is a good, good, good way. You don't have to finish what you have started. Sometimes you're going and then you just somehow dismount. No, 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 we're not going there. And you are here, good. Doesn't matter what other people say.
Where do you live normally? In France. In France, of course. <laughs> Laurence. <laughs> for the moment. Everything is for the moment. I love this about the French. I learned this expression <laughs> from the French. You ask them anything, you know, would you like another cup of tea? <laughs> I'm fine for the moment. That is very good. And it is very, very, it's very, very real and true. Some people say, oh, today I'm in such a bad state. No, I'm in a bad state for the moment. So this for the moment, if we listen to it, it's a very good thing. Yeah, right now this is a moment, uh, it's, this is being experienced. Next moment can be different. Mm. Mm. I'm learning to really live by that, not, not to plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything comes clear when it's clear to you that you're only the pure consciousness and everything else is imagined. Automatically you are conversant with life in the most natural way. Without plan, without practice anymore, everything is clear for you. I want to speak with you after. Not to hide something about satsang, just something for her. Okay? Yes. Okay. Um. Hmm. <laughs> very French. Nice. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, th there was this this poem after. Okay. Yeah, yeah. After, after. After. Yeah. Uh, there is no, no, no after for you. Don't even touch after. Okay. So okay. I go see Sri. Huh? I go see Sri to see you. No, Speak. Sri will come and find you. Sri will come and find you. Yeah. So no after for you. Don't think about after, because the, the mind subtly starts to push after this, before this, after. And then this is your training uh, to just pay attention to now, just now. Okay. Then this is a very, very is a very, very small um, advice. Uh, in order to recognize your universal nature. You saved my life, Muji. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Keep talking to her. Keep keep this conversation on. For you. <laughs> she said, "Keep this conversation going." Uh, trust me a little bit on that one. <laughs> okay. Okay, come now, let me see. Pranam Maharaj. Maharaj, many times, I, I asked you this yesterday also, many times you mention about this enquiry to find out who am I. And uh, another thing is, when people ask you about suffering, you uh, uh, ask them to the, ask the other question, which is to find out who the sufferer is. Yes. And some of Maharaj, suffering and overcoming suffering seems to be a greater motivation than to find out who am I. So, how to go about this? Yes. This is a question from you directly. You want to, you're suffering, you want to know how to come out of suffering. How are you suffering? Oh, Maharaj, ways more than one the body, age, health. The impulses, uh, the interaction, yes. the emotional pain, so many. Uh, pain is something actual, or there's something actual about pain. Suffering is to do with an attitude towards pain. So pain is actual, suffering is optional. Pain is to do with something, even pain also, the way that pain is also interpreted, depending upon how personal you are. Something can be painful, you say it's painful. Uh, who can measure the pain? Mm, someone can have a, 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 some meter that measures, okay, we have, we've gone up to eight out of ten here, and he's still smiling. <laughs> okay? Another one has gone to two, and he's kind of like, ah, 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 ah. So, can we look to the instrument to see how painful something is, or to the reaction to see how painful something is? You see? So, the pain itself is to do with the, uh, something to do with the one 
who pain, who pain is coming to. And that can be changed according to if you are able to be detached also. There are people that can be detached. Even a simple example, you know, and we're not using pain, but why not you, uh, we can swap that. Um, I had one nephew, and I used to, whenever I go to the house of my sister, uh, I had this little play that I would grab him and tickle him. He would be like, sort of like six, seven years old at the time. I used to grab him, you know, come on, Nathan, come here, and, uh, and I'd grab him, tickle, 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 tickle. And this is a little tradition we started, no? It went on every time I go there. Uh, so one time now, he was about seven years old, and I said, come on, I'm going to tickle you. And he goes, stop, stop, stop. And I said, okay. He says, Tickle me now, Uncle. <laughs> I said, suddenly it was not fun anymore. And I said, go on, tickle, 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 tickle. So I said, come here. And he was like. <laughs> I said, this is very good. This is very good. It means you can do something with your attention. You can pull it away from the crime scene. And what did you do? What happened there? He said, just I just uh, became empty. <laughs> so, same thing. Some people are able to somehow bring their attention away from where maybe the mind is going, oh, I'm going to be tickled, and oh, you're not going to be able to, it's going to be horrible, and so on. And we play along with that. So even pain, which is uh, recognized as an actual thing, phenomenon, can be experienced in a different way. Suffering is another step from this also. Uh, I remember one conversation that happened in Mumbai some time ago, in the satsang of Sri Nisargadatta Maharaj, when the Master was speaking, and someone said, Sir, I am very much uh, your words are very powerful for me. But can I say something? If I must be honest, this man said, young man, if I must be honest, I must admit I am always experiencing suffering. So the master was very quick back. He says, No, that is not true. You are not experiencing suffering. You are suffering your experiencing. Ah. You are not experiencing suffering, you are suffering, you are experiencing. What it mean? He made an option out of it. You, suffering is not a thing, it is a state. You are not experiencing suffering, you are suffering, you are experiencing. Which means, that can change. If suffering was something, then everyone would uh, suffer that something. He's saying, the suffering, you are uh, suffering, you are experiencing. Meaning that, why are you suffering, you are experiencing. You see? So again now, relating to your question, you see, how can I end suffering? How can I come out, find out, I say, who the sufferer is? No, to you. Did you try to find out who the sufferer is? Can there be suffering without a sufferer? So what is important for suffering is not just pain, but some identity must be there that says, no, I can't take this, it's too much, and so on, so on, so An identity. Also, pain could come and someone goes, ah, ah, yeah, no, no, enough, enough. And still, also, they can be, uh, they, they, they didn't lose who they are to experience that. But, uh, so when I say, who exactly can the sufferer be identified? Is it possible? What did you do with that? Yeah, usually it is uh, something which I hold on to, yeah. some identity which I hold on to. Yes. You who hold on to the identity is what? Slow down. You say, it is something that I hold on to it. That which you are calling I who hold on to the suffering or something, what is that I? Is that I stable? Is it reliable, this voice? No, open question. No, 
is that I that says, you know, yes, I hold on to that. You know? I didn't hold on to the the laughter and everything, but to the pain, I hold on to this sense of suffering. I hold on to it. I is what? It's not a reliable one. Not reliable one. Why? Because it keeps changing my likes and uh, dislikes also. Yes, yes, yes. So, what you can also say is something, obviously speaking like this, it is observed also. Hmm? I called you on that one. You see, can you observe this or not? Can this be observed or not? And if it can be observed, what does it mean that you can observe something that you cannot be the thing you are observing? You cannot be the thing you are observing because they come and go, comes and goes out of your attention. If you are that thing, when it goes, you would also be gone. But you are here to say, Ah, now it's gone. So you are not the thing you are observing. Yesterday, I was pointing about self-awareness, and I said that uh, the great beginning is to start with the sense of being. Like you know that you exist. You have a sense, the body is here, and you know you are conscious uh, of this. Then I say, instead of bring, putting the attention on the things coming up in the mind, the traffic of thoughts, sensations and so on, bring that to the sense of being. Please pay attention now. I'm going to surprise you a little bit. I say, bring it to the sense of being. Then you say, OK. And don't let it con connect with other thoughts or anything at all. Just stay in the sense of being. And just like that, when followed, we begin to experience some sense of peace or expansiveness and a silence. The noise of the mind is not there. So we feel, thank you, thank you. I feel I am really just right here now. My beingness is right here. That's a very concentrated state. But I asked you just like this, and I'm saying now, whatever you can perceive is not your final truth. So even the sense of being itself, even the sense of being, the earliest manifestation arising from absoluteness, the sense I am, and beingness are one. Even one's beingness is observable. If your very being, which is closer than intimacy, is observable, that which observes, observe it is where and what? Has everybody fallen off the swinging bridge yet? <laughs> this, I have not gone this way with you. Um, yes, I have, but not in this line. We shared the sense of being. Even if you are self-aware at the level of beingness, meaning that you are paying attention just to your own uh, sense of existence, without story, without history, without relationship, without anything, just being alone externally and internally, alone. You follow? Yes. yes. That alone also will bring great peace and joy and contentment. Even love is uh, beginning to flow here. But now, today, I am saying, even if this is observable, what is observing this? Can that be seen? No. If it cannot be seen, how can we know it exists?
the fact is helpful the more subtle the sense of being itself is perceived that's fact that's already a proof there's something more subtle than even the sense of being don't try to think oh what is that because the mind will says i'll help you i'll show you your own private google will come i know what that is no you don't it cannot be known in the classical sense it cannot be known separate from you there is no separation in it but that is the ultimate that is the self ooh grasp wow Is it grasped merely as a kind of uh, common sense, kind of like, uh, yes, intellectually, I understand this? Ah. Then, in a way, I could say you have found that which cannot be found. You have reached that which cannot be reached. you have seen and are in the seeing of that which cannot be seen you are one with that which could never be two and you what about you maraj it's just an intellectual understanding yeah who says it's an intellectual understanding is the intellect say that's an intellectual understanding is not even intellect also observable yes is not even intelligence also perceived is not even the saying you know, uh, this is an intellectual understanding also perceived also yes by what is it perceived even the thing that is saying yes uh, uh, yes uh, yes i uh, i uh, it's uh, for me it's only an intellectual understanding that is also perceived the moment it is spoken the breath that is speaking eh uh, that is also perceived also and now it's blown away like a cloud also or it may be still seem to be remaining because of memory and the importance given to that moment and that statement Have I gone too far to say that? What about you? Yeah. What? I'm following the train, Maharaj. You are following the train of thoughts. What you see? You are following the train of thoughts. Where are they going? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you following train of thoughts? Where are they going? You are the one watching train of thoughts to going, going, going. Are you going also? No, no I'm observing. Hmm. Then is it healthy to be following the train of thoughts? Uh, they are going by themselves. They are going, even unforced. They are leaving, no, to make room for the next train coming. <laughs> okay, why you should be worried about it? Pay attention to yourself. what it means just be the witness is that an action that is to be taken no witnessing is already there uh something is aware yes yes my attention is moving constantly going towards you know pursuing the thoughts trying to work them out now i must stay just in the place of the witness that's healthy for a while until what what is the purpose what's the value of witnessing what is the value or purpose of witnessing something here in this context of uh, 
the search for truth. It is only to confirm that all things witnessed and witnessable are changing. Are changing, isn't it? Whatever they may be, they are changing. You cannot maintain uh, continuous, unbroken contact with anything. Even your favorite concept, you cannot do it. It's coming and going. Knowing that, leave it. It's going by itself. That's the first thing. That all things perceivable are moving along like clouds passing, waves flowing by, like that. No? Having seen that, no, like that, the energy returns to the source of the witnessing itself. You become aware of the environment hmm, of the witnessing itself. Because there's no further energy needs to be wasted paying attention to something that's constantly changing. So it comes back now, that which is witnessing all of this, no? then you become aware, and this is right here. So you're not fragmented in your observation, jumping all over the place. Now you are at the very source where even witnessing is witnessed. Can I say like that even? That even the act or the functioning of perception is also perceived. Have you moved? No. Yes, I can witness the witnessing. Yes. At the, at the point where the witness or the witnessing is perceived, huh? who is there to know that? What is there? What can you say? Everything is spontaneously observed, without effort. You wake up in the morning, uh, did you have to switch on the senses? Eyes, uh, ears, body. <laughs> no, automatically they come into function, no? Automatically they come. Uh, with the arising of consciousness, all the functions wake up all together. What have you done? Hmm? Did you switch on the lungs, breathing? <laughs> no, everything is there already. What are you doing? Even observing, aware of uh, the functioning of the senses, the sense of time, everything is automatically there. Even the sense of doing something also appears also. In front of what? That which cannot be described. That is the supreme consciousness. Is it clear? Yes, Intellectually clear? More than that. More than that. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Blue shirt, eh? Blue shirt? Blue trousers. Hello, Muji. I have to go here somehow. <laughs> okay, we're coming, we're coming. Let's have a look. What uh, I want to hear what you have to say for sure. <laughs> It is clear to me that I am consciousness. Yeah. That I am consciousness. Slow down. Say again. It is clear to it me. It is clear to you. That I am consciousness. That you are consciousness. Yes. My attention usually goes to the trying to be the consciousness. It's like I recognize that 
I'm not struggling to be consciousness. My mind is trying to be that. Ah, very significant observation, no? It's not what I am is trying to be consciousness. I observe my mind is trying to be consciousness, or less, it says so. Because if my mind saying, I'm really trying to get close and close to consciousness, you might believe in that and end up becoming a journeyer to turn to consciousness. You see how subtle it is, no? And this, these things you must transcend, meaning become wise enough to see this is just uh, this is not true. I am already here. Who is trying to become here? My mind is saying, you know, yes, but you know, I'm not yet conscious that I'm conscious. And something is seen that my mind is saying. I'm not yet conscious that I'm conscious. Okay, good. I don't really know where to go from here. Nowhere. Finish. <laughs> Boom. Short satsang. <laughs> I mean it also. Sometimes we feel well, oh, lunch is finished quickly. Why not? Do you have the power to leave it right there? Is it enough or not? This morning, Ani was uh, working on my shoulder, and she said uh, uh, something to me. She says, "Less is best." Not talking about massage. I'm saying that many people. Ani, you are here. Yeah, Ani's here. Ani said, "See, I remember what you say." So many people want to see you, Guruji, one to one. Sri told me, many people want to see you. And uh, I said, But it's impossible, I can't do it like that. And he says, Less is more. This is what you said? Less is more. Less is best. Sometimes we are overworking at something which is still. You have said it like that. You came and you say, I know that I am the consciousness. I observe my mind trying to become consciousness. But I know it is my mind trying to become consciousness. Or now you are going to say, How much time should I give the mind to catch up to me? It doesn't make sense. She's never, the mind is never going to reach it, yeah. if that's what you are saying. So, boom! <laughs> Let's listen to what he's going to say now. It's all mind. Like The mind is feeling it's not finished yet. Yes, yes. Somehow. Yes. We know. We know this voice, no? Mr. Mind. It's not finished. Or it's like more energetic, like there is a feeling of uh, incompleteness. Yes. And not a voice. But yes. Somebody also said to me, you know, um, Guruji, I feel that uh, there is something wrong here, you know? I said, okay, what is it that's wrong? I don't know. <laughs> so, how do you know it's wrong? Sort of feeling. You are going to endorse a feeling with such a high thing to say that you know the mind, some feeling saying, it's not finished. It's not finished. Don't accept the mind saying it's not finished. Don't accept the mind saying it's finished. You got it. If I say if the mind say, Oh, it's not finished, oh, watch out. You know, the mind says, Ah. Thank you, it's finished. No, also don't accept it. The self has nothing to do with starts and finish. I have nothing to say. Thank you. <laughs> there comes that moment. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, are you happy? Uh, Wrong question. Sorry. No, it's uh, it's good. It's good. The I mind is looking happy and oh, happy. 
Yes, but either is a sense of uh, peace. Peace. Peace, yeah, not peace. happiness. Like, yeah. Yes, not, not excited yes. happiness. Yes. A peace is not different from contentment, contentment is not different from joy, joy is not different from love, actually. Everything springs from I. <laughs> Where did I spring from? If everything came from I, and also the I also came, where from where it come? Don't tell me words. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, blue shirt, uh, grey shirt. Okay, okay, okay. Not a <laughs> Okay, sing a duet. <laughs> okay, you go now. Let me see. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Uh, I want to share an experience and observation. A lot of time, I feel I have experienced the truth. And often it happens that a lot of thoughts cross by and being in the conscious state, I, it, I know it will flow and I don't have to participate. Yeah. But certain times, you know, the mind plays that game and we participate. Yes, some energy goes there. Yeah. The energy that goes to participate is observable or not? Yeah. That's, that is important. If some voice inside you go, that is also seen. And you recognize the significance of pointing out that is also seen and something cuts giving that importance and remain conscious of where you actually are in the unmoving place. Mm. Yeah. But when but when we participate, when we divert our energy to any of the thoughts, yes. there's this conscious state which tells me not to go. Yes, okay. But the mind overpowers at certain times. Does it overpower the voice that says, no, don't go? Yeah. yeah. What is saying don't go? The internal feeling. Yes. Uh, maybe a wisdom in you said, leave that. Yeah. Okay, all right. And then, but a stronger... Uh, it's a voice says, no, go for it, okay? Is it that the voice is stronger or the one who is listening is weak for that voice? Come again. Is it that the, the voice itself is stronger than that which says, leave it? Is it the voice that's stronger or the one who is listening to the voice uh, weak, too weak to... The, the to one who is listening to the voice is weak. Yes. Is that you? Yeah, but, but the voice is really very strong that you don't have to participate, yeah. you know? But yeah, yeah. And when I participate, I, then, then after a certain point of time, I realize that yeah. it was a mistake. Yes, and okay. Then, Ye yeah, and then? And then I feel very bad about it. I feel… Let me give you a break about that. Don't feel too badly about it. It's better just to forget that and stay where you are. Don't grieve about these things because the mind is there wanting you to grieve about them. You see? Don't make anniversaries out of your pain. 
uh, something happened, you made a mistake, okay, it's a mistake, okay. Life, uh, making mistake is, uh, the Paramatman designed the world that mistakes will be made, have to be made. They'll become one of your good teachers. If you, if you learn from your mistake, then it doesn't remain a mistake. That's all. But beating oneself up about it, oh no, why did I do that? You know, why did I do that? It's almost paramount to arrogance, actually. We cannot help. There's a saying, uh, to err, means to make mistake, is human. You're going to make mistake, but you will learn from them, you grow. It's actually very important that sometimes you cannot discover something until you, you make some mistakes about it then it becomes real for you. So don't make that like somehow, oh, you made a mistake, you see? And it can be so uh, entrenched. One time in the, in the south of India, uh, there was a bad accident on the street. A woman was run over. Uh, she lost a lot of blood. She went to hospital. Uh, and uh, it came to our attention that a lady had done that. So I asked in the Sangha, we asked in the Sangha, uh, we need people to give blood. So many, many people came, but nobody knew what blood type. But still many people went, okay? Then uh, uh, somehow the blood was, give, was, uh, was uh, uh, given when finally we found out it was what blood type was. So one of our friends, uh, you know, I know he's listening now, a Japanese friend like this, uh, he was there also, and uh, somebody came and they said they could not take this blood from this person. And he said, you failed? <laughs> well, you failed. You failed. Said, it's not failure. It's not failure. They couldn't take it. But the idea that you did something wrong, you were not accepted, that's a big thing. No, he said, no, it was not the match. It was not there. It's okay. But it can be read as a failure. Many things in our mind, you know, we feel like it was a failure. And then it registers too strongly. And if you register a number of things like that, you start to impregnate uh, your mind with this idea that you failed. So, uh, no, uh, leave that aside, uh, pay attention to where you are now, that's all. Don't build up these things. Uh, sometimes you say, okay, it was good that that happened in some way, because now I learned something from that, and move on, that's it. Thank you. That's all? Okay, so it must be very important then. But yeah, it's, it is, I understand. But the feeling that I get when I, you know, fail. Say again? The feeling. The feeling you get. The feeling that I get when yeah. I fail. When you fail. Yeah. At anything? At anything, it feels like the, purfer, the purpose itself is defeated. That's, that's a very strong feeling I get inside. Ah. And what about correcting things? You make a mistake and it is corrected. Does that yeah. not also change the... So a lot, so when I make any mistake and if any such situation arises again, there's a constant thought at yeah. the back of the mind well, that, okay, you had committed a mistake earlier, this time you have yeah. to, you know? Yes. Correct yourself. This is the ego playing at righteousness. That would be the ego playing the game of righteousness. And it makes for a very unhappy life. Don't be too much of a perfectionist. Because then you will not be able to, to forgive uh, yourself or to see and say, that's life, you know, never mind, you know, let's move on. Uh, you would be maybe stuck with something and, you know, for days you, you can't come out of a state. In the meantime, other things may happen, then you are even, oh no, it's like, I, I can't have another problem, I'm not sorted this one out yet. You really need to flush all of that away. That is, uh, is, is not a good attitude, it's not truthful, and it is not really, it's something to be actually discarded. You may have to work a little bit to remember that. It is to do also with personal identity. 
the personal identity, this is a, a, what you may call a vasana, no? A samskara, vasana, meaning that it is some dormant tendency that will flare up once in a while, and when it comes up like that, if it is not recognized uh, to be also just phenomenal and uh, not given too much importance, then uh, it will go. But the tendency is that when it comes, it commands a lot of attention, okay? And it can paralyze you for a while. You see? It's like holding the beingness hostage by this kind of reaction, and you are there kind of you know, just giving so much attention to that. So, uh, bless that you, uh, this, you, that gets dropped, because it is not contributing to your spiritual maturing and transcendence. It is not a healthy state. So I'm saying this so that it goes more deeply inside, that you see this, aha, no, that's not, that's not, that's not uh, good. Yeah, and mm. it becomes very difficult to you to forgive my own self and say that it's okay. How are you in forgiving other people? It's easy. Easy? Yeah. Yeah. But so, when it comes to my own self, yes. it becomes very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. It is that's what's happening. The identity has uh, created something wherever it came from, from conditioning, from whatever it is. It is a state that is, uh, is playing out that uh, you should not make mistakes. Well, you are going to make mistakes. There is no one, there is no perfect personality. There are no perfect persons. You must make a mistake. Don't go out to make them, <laughs> but accept that that's life. It happens sometimes. Don't just kind of think, oh, no, it's nothing, nothing. Sometimes you have to look and say, actually, that was not good. I'll make sure I don't make that one again. That can be healthy. But don't take it another step further and make it too personal. You know? Yeah. Very important to point. Now I face a lot of difficulty in coming out of it. It's like I am. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, the coming out of it is to recognize that the one who has this challenge also is not really you, actually. It, 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 of course, something's going to feel, haha, of course it's me. Because that's the way you have learned to identify yourself. But I'm putting yourself as being not a person, but as consciousness. So the consciousness is greater than any person. The person is a shape arising in consciousness, appearing in consciousness. That shape can change and can also vanish. But you are still here as the consciousness. Take consciousness to be yourself and not this personal idea. That's how great and how free you are. If you are a person, you are heavily restricted. If you are consciousness, those restrictions, those judgments, they fade away. They are not for consciousness, they are for the sense of the person. These, these uh, satsangs are being recorded, so you can watch again and listen again and really give it attention because you can be easily free from this. But holding on to identity, personal identity, also personal identity is not stable. It is always changing. It, uh, it gets fed up of itself and wants to change. It keeps, it's like an amoeba. It's always changing shape. But in your mind, you hold on to something that I like, it's fixed and it's, it's, it's continuous. But these are just ideas that you have given too much importance to. All ideas, one day you will transcend their influence. They are useful for a while. And even on awakening to the truth, some ideas, of course, you will use them and so on. But they will not master you, they will not overwhelm you. You'll make use of it. It's the language of consciousness. You're using these shapes and ideas, but uh, they're always just something in your hands. They're not in your head anymore. Good? Yeah. Ah, okay. Thank you. Namaste. 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 Namaste.
You come in. You come in. Namaste. Namaste. Uh, I started following your your pointings, and uh, through observation, I saw uh, like parts of me, of or parts that I thought there were me, like f falling, falling down, ah. and uh, a clarity came. Yes. Like uh, a silence. Yes. Like, and I was uh, sitting like uh, uh, for hours in this emptiness, nothingness. In the in a state of emptiness. Yeah. yeah. So okay. Uh, at at the same time, uh, uh, with this uh, like immense clarity, um, uh, f feelings, even the. the the one that has the feelings or experiences life um, there was a sense of uh, m maybe harshness like something hard there hard hard like yes. um, a bit frozen maybe yeah the person the, the sense of person or uh, you know yeah or uh, yeah uh, now that I'm here and I'm I have the opportunity to to be with you, and uh, I stay um, like uh, I gave. I started staying as awareness, like dropping into a silence, and uh, the all the the ghosts that are coming. That through observation where choop, fall down, fall down, uh, they come very strongly when I I don't give attention to them. And so I when you don't give attention to them, they come more strong. Yes. 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 Uh, when I was observing this, yeah, this. Yeah. These ghosts, let's say, or anything, they were uh, they were dropping, you know. Now that uh, I'm here and I, I follow this pointing, like staying as uh, awareness, yeah. staying like there's two staying things. Staying in the silence and y yeah, yeah. Uh, somehow I again I then I, I I identify with this. Uh, okay, there is a, a distinction here. One is. Staying as the awareness is useful in the beginning because of the reflex to keep referring back to the old regime of identity as a person. You follow? Because in the early stages, uh, the senses, sometimes the mind comes in, something catches again, and you find yourself being personal again. So the, the advice is stay as the awareness. Stay as the awareness, though, can seem like there's someone to stay as the awareness. You follow this? Yes. But gradually, as, uh, it's, it's as best an advice can, that can be given at a certain stage of our maturing. Stay as the awareness. Stay as the awareness. It's okay, okay yeah, 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 stay as the awareness. Then some, oh, sorry, my mind is coming very, very strong and he's saying that you're only pretending this. And what? Then, it, then it's, it, it's believed again that I'm only pretending that I'm staying as the awareness. It's a good one. The mind comes and saying, but you're only, you're only imagining you're staying as the awareness. You haven't done it. So why did that feel so strong? Please listen now. Why did that feel so strong? Because one is uh, doubt come. I have been staying as awareness. But there's only awareness. There's nobody staying as awareness. There's only awareness. There's no one being aware. There's just the awareness itself is there.
Remember I said the other day uh, something, I say that uh, the word I, if I say I think, I think, the I in the I think is as unreal as the it in the it rains. What is it rains? There's raining. There's thinking. But I think. It snowed. It means what? I think. I is what think. But because of regular use, this I develops a certain sense of reality in it. Now it comes uh, because you were told, uh, stay as awareness, and at the moment, uh, it's still listening as a sadaka. You are listening as one to do it. And it works, I stay as awareness. But I have to keep staying as awareness. You see? Suppose I'd said to Laurence, keep being Laurence. And you believe, uh, yes, yes. You know, because sometimes I'm Livette. Sometimes I'm Lorraine. No, keep staying as Laurence. Oh, yes, let's do it, Laurence. Then a doubt come. I must remember not to be Lorraine. I'm Laurence. But without this idea, there would not have been any trouble. Now I say, stay as the awareness. Uh, because before, you used to staying as the person. So I said, stay as the awareness in which the person is seen. So that uh, is, yeah, we try to stay as awareness. But at a certain point, you realize, but there's just awareness. Uh, it's what I am. When you realize awareness is what I am, do you have to stay as awareness? Remember I said, as far as truth is concerned, when the seeker finds what it is searching for, the seeker does not become a finder, but sinks inside the source itself. It makes sense? Yes. Because if the seeker discovers awareness and becomes, oh, I found it, then what will happen? Please tell me it will also experience, I lost it. And why was that? Because the I is there, to, which is the mind, saying that I've been looking for it for a long time and finally I found it. I found it. For how long? On the way to the celebration party already. Ah. Oh, no, no. Call off the party, call off the party. No, I lost it, no? But if there's no I to find it and no I to lose it, what is there, you see? It alone is here, no? These are subtle things. And the power of consciousness in you, inherently and spontaneously, demonstrate these subtleties to overcome all the cunning ways of the psychological mind. Trust it. Observe and see. You may call it grace, but it is working on your behalf. In the beginning, you must make effort. Don't just ask, please help me, please help me. No. Step forward and help will come. But if you're sitting there, oh, I'm so hungry, I'm so hungry, you know. I said, but the banana is right here. Yeah, but could you peel it for me? You know? <laughs> Well, uh, but uh, where is it, you know? Why don't you peel it for yourself? I can't. Where's the banana? It's there. I said, but you have the power to pick it up. So if you're asking help, please help me, help me, but you do nothing about it, then it's already show you're not serious. At least make a step to do it, and then you cannot do it, then power comes to do it. This is how grace works. That is how faith works. You see? So in the beginning, it's, it's very beautiful to hear what you are sharing. And you have not made any real big mistake, but some subtle thing. 
you see, that, uh, yeah, I stay as the awareness, but then you said some, when I have to stay as the awareness, then some strong, some ghost comes. Yes. When I was observing the ghosts, they were just falling, <sighs> falling, the ghosts are, are dying. Yes. But when I was paying attention to stay as awareness, the ghost came back. Ooh. <laughs> and suddenly, ha ah, ha yes, ah, it's, so uh, yeah. it, it happens these days, like, um, maybe that's, it's, I mean, it's misunderstanding, probably. Yeah, but the thing is that as awareness itself, ghost comes in awareness, angels come in awareness, cold come, hot come, time come, all come and go as awareness because nobody has the job to stay as awareness. When this happens, like you say, like when these uh, ghosts come and I take a distance, and then I, I can observe them. Yes. And Taking a distance is the same as uh, paying attention that you're, there's only the awareness itself. All these things are coming, just like you can only experience all these things in the waking state. You know? And when the mind is there, maybe in dream, you also can experience many things. But uh, so all of them are the content and the play happening in the waking state. All of the things that you are perceiving are happening on the screen of consciousness. Even the one trying to stay as the awareness is also perceivable on the screen of consciousness. And the ghosts that come and when you are paying attention to them, they collapse. And when you are trying to stay, just remain as the awareness, they come. Because they know that he is not sure that he is the awareness. He is trying to stay. Ooh. <laughs> that is, that is can happen. So therefore, uh, you keep looking and you see, but everything, everything is coming and going from here. But this, which is, is not coming and going. Who gets it? You follow or not? Yes. It's a very important thing. It's only through satsang where we can see these things exposed. You know? Because sometimes your mind doesn't want to stand up in satsang, you know? Because he knows that <laughs> left you and him alone, he's got the advantage. But if you speak him out, then, uh, you know, it's like, no, no, don't say that. No, no, don't say that. This is only for you and me. You know? No, don't say it. So something is protecting this, the very thing that's making you feel vulnerable also. So when someone comes and they speak, I love that they speak out. That is already the first step in blowing these uh, delusions away. I'm very happy for this. Thank you. Uh, you said th something that uh, you are not sure that you are the aware awareness. A, a thought comes that you are not sure yeah, that you yeah, are the yeah, awareness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? And, uh, Which is a thought appearing in the awareness itself. Yes. And even the one that the thought is referring to, the you, are not sure that you are the awareness. This you is also perceivable in awareness or not? Which is the greater? The one who is not sure about that their awareness, or that which perceives the one <laughs> saying, I'm not yet uh, aware. Yeah. The one who perceives. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes or all the time? Sometimes it will see this, or at any time it will see this. Meaning, any time the thought or the doubt comes, instead of believing the doubt by identifying as the person, where the doubt could be true about. When seen from awareness, what happened? We have to I do any I work? I see that the, the, the doubt is there, the, the feeling is there, the believing of the doubt is there, but still all this is watched. I don't have to believe the belief. Yes. And also by themselves they are leaving. They can't stay. They can't stay. Why are they leaving if they are true? If they are true, they can't leave. They are going. Until they come again. <laughs> Along with the doubter. Oh, no. What are we talking about? Uh, keep confirming. 
when don't have to go looking for it it comes when it comes sit with that and look uh, the subtlety is that you will still have a dynamic expression where you're interacting with beings acting reacting interacting observing all this movement is also there but now knowing that you are that which you are uh, nothing will overwhelm you this body is still living to perform some action thoughts are still coming but now they will not overwhelm you, you they're in they're they're in a higher service because the ego is diminishing or it's just uh, no more it is going and even if it stays a little bit of ego somehow because some seeing still needs even after the realization of the self some little spots are still coming up and you can keep combing combing it out slowly like that still against the background of unchanging awareness so what I'm saying again is that there continues to be a sense of a deepening, a refining, a maturing, as long as the body is here and there's consciousness and the body, there continues to be a deepening, a maturing, a refining, at the same time happening in the midst of the unchanging awareness. This is a paradox. It is just how it is like that. Yeah, I want to to, to thank you, uh, and uh, because I, I try to to go through this and find it for uh, alone, you know, and it's not possible. <laughs> and uh, yes. the, it, the way that you you support me, it's so you know great and yes, so yeah. Thank, thank you. you. It is wise to seek help until you go beyond the need for help. Because mind will tell you, no, you can do it by yourself, you can do it by yourself. And some little bit of a bit of arrogance can come with that. Take help. You know, who are you taking help from? From the self. From the self. This is self help. <laughs> yes, yes. Not ego self. No. The wise one is learning from everyone. A wise person is wise because they learn from everyone. I was told that uh, the, they asked, why is the Buddha got such big ears? He says, because he listens more than he speaks. <laughs> You're learning something, discover, ah, looking like this. And so uh, don't be afraid that you seek help, but you must be wise enough to know also, sometimes the mind is coming in the form of help from some people, and you got to know. So this is not. This one is not. This one also is not true. And is that a big mistake? No, because you need to discern when something is true or not true. This is how we develop more in wisdom and refine the consciousness by recognizing the truth and the untruth. What resonates and what somehow energy is not right and you can you know like this so everything is in service to the realization of the the self you are it's beautiful what to do now <laughs> what to do now Okay, I give you three minutes to tell me what you want to say. Yeah, okay. <coughs> Dear Muji Baba, Namaste. Namaste. I, I please apo I apologize for my e eagerness to come here, but I realized that I didn't need to. And I realized that I am not this need to come here. And all of these scenarios that it gave me all of these shivers and tingling that I feel now. I am not it. I am not all of these scenarios. I am not all of this, even perceiving this at the moment. I am not it. Even after yesterday's satsangs, very, very strange things are happening to me. You like? 
like this, like the shivers, like tingling, like, like. Um, I would tell you something. If shivers and tingling, and uh, all these things are happening, be very present in this, because something in the way that you are expressing makes me pay attention a little bit there. Uh, if all these things, sometimes we say people catch satsang flu. They come to satsang and after they feel sick and they can't. Uh, all these things are good if you pay attention and don't identify with them. Sometimes there comes a burning. People come and they say, just kind of just feel it's like they're on fire. And they say, what you want, water? And they say, no, turn up the fire. Because it means that something, something is caught, and somehow this burning can be much more powerful than your private sadhana, meaning your private spiritual practice. Maybe this burning burns out a lot of things that are not true. But if you say, "Yeah, I know it's not me. I know it's not me. It's not me," and you, I say, "No, it's not an attack on you necessarily." You being what? It's not me. It's not me. What is you then? This is what I feel. This is what I observe. Yeah. That this is burning a lot of things in me. And when I ask, who is the one who feels this? Who is the one who gives me this burning, the, these shivers? And in what it emerges? What it emerges in? And who am I without that? Yeah, and I still feel you're missing something. It's like you are sick, and the doctor gives you an injection. You say, "Who is feeling this needle? And who is feeling this stuff? And I don't want this." No, you need to pay attention to this, because some help comes sometimes, and uh, you, in, instead of receiving and saying, "Just let this uh, play out," and you know, just just watch it, don't identify with it, and allow it to reveal uh, what really is behind it rather than to be so quick to say, I don't like these feelings, I know I am not them, I know I'm not them. It's a bit uh, premature reaction, I feel. Better to be quiet and pay attention to what is happening. You don't have to identify with it, but why not accept it as grace also? Yes, yes, yes. You see, yes. why not accept it as grace? Do you know how grace looks? Do you know how grace behaves? You see, grace can come in the... Uh, it's like, as Christ said one time, it's better, you see. To, what, what is the point of, having, of getting all these things, having all these things, and you go into hell? It's better that you, you lose your limbs and go into hell than to have all your limbs all healthy and go into heaven, you know, than to, uh, lose, to have all your beautiful body and go to hell. He's speaking the same thing. Sometimes the grace comes in very strong ways. Very strong way. You feel burning. You feel like even people shame you. Even people attack you. They attack you and they say things which are not true. We also, I experience this also. That people say many things. They invent things to, to, to against you. He say, but I'm not doing any. Everything that is coming from here is for goodness sake is for God's sake, and still it comes. Am I to see it as, oh, just curse? No, I thank God for them. Yes. Yes. Because these things will ripen your consciousness in ways that uh, you will not imagine. Everyone who chooses truth comes under fire, and it will feel even injustice and persecution will come to you. But you will grow out of it and much more powerfully than if your experiencing is all beautiful and all more. No, sometimes when you are under bang, 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 and, uh, and you come out of that with great power, great peace, and no cynicism also, and love also come. So all this, accept in fact everything that come to you as grace uh, coming from God. If you have this attitude, you will conquer this world very quickly. If you have the attitude that whatever comes, bitter or sweet, thank you. Help me to, to you know, rid me of ego. 
uh, merge me with you. Don't matter. It is grace. To refuse it is disgrace. Accept. Life is not uh, uh, attacking you. It's giving you strong medicine, acid grace. And sometimes we need. We don't know what you need. You say, "Oh God, you know, please help me to speak uh, nicely and to be very nice and calm and like this." And he sticks his finger down your throat and thank you. Oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Can you say thank you? So these things, you know, don't see them, don't misread your experiences. Very often we are putting the wrong labels on our experience. Uh, grace doesn't have to come looking all nice and sweet. Sometimes very strong. Sometimes people close to you reject you. And you say, oh God, maybe uh, this is a sign I'm on the wrong path. No. Uh, just keep your heart good and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I, uh, help me to, to grasp this, if it is your will or whatever it is. So don't feel like, yeah, okay, I'm feeling, okay, no, I, I'm not this shivering, I'm not this. Uh, if you are going to inquire like that, then also inquire, I'm not this joy, I'm not this peace. I'm not this, uh, this uh, enjoyment, uh, and I'm not also the not enjoyment. Don't just throw the things that feel uncomfortable in the moment, because it is your mind that feels the discomfort also. It is good you come like that, so that these things can be said also. You know? Uh, you, are, you are the Self. And uh, you know, in, in the process of really discovering the fullness of yourself, so these things, they come and they can feel like, yes, you came and you came across here because you had an earnestness and yes. eager to come. Yes, yes. But uh, it is a good thing that happened to you. I know. Uh. I feel grace and I'm grateful for that. I feel a lot of grace and it happened before a lot of times, but this time it's like so strong that, you know, I had to come here and share this. Yes. And it is good, brother. It is good. Very often in life, we are misreading the signs, and the experiences. You know, uh, nothing in the world is against you, but you must overcome this. Nothing in the world is against you personally. If you are walking in the forest and you come across a hungry lion, he'll probably eat you. But it's nothing personal. You understand? There's nothing really against you, like oh, against. No, we are life. But we must understand this. You came here to understand the mechanism of the psychological identity, and to overcome him. This is what's called when identity and uh, this kind of Maya mind come together. That's what we call the devil or Satan or something to confuse you. The more you identify personally, the more it will catch you. you see? But the more you disidentify and observe with attachment, he loses grip, and again, you come back to clarity and peace. It is for you. And it, you know what? It is because of love also. Love brought you here to experience even pain and hurt and rejection and all of this and you will transcend them. <laughs> so great is that which you truly are. And I want to thank you for coming like this, because it is, it is this also, this dynamic 
uh, activity that is blessing everybody because we can see a bit of ourselves in each other if it is not that uh, then what chance we have we learn from each other we we feel the same pain same frustrations but i'm telling you it's part of the human experience of consciousness and consciousness will use them to return home and the greatest of home coming is right here is just recognizing that uh, which is the source before the birth of any concept before the birth of time before the birth of form is here the one supreme self the lord of the universe dwells within your heart this way so blessed are you only when we start to feel things this is inauspicious and so on and of course there will be pain and there will be people who want to hurt you also like i told you the wise man builds a house with the stones his enemies throw at him and lives happily in this house you have to be such a wise person don't every time something painful comes you buckle and uh, you no no you know reflect cry get over it reflect grow transcend that is the power that god has put in you that's all Dear Muji Baba, I love you so much. I love you more. <laughs> what? What was that? I love you more, I said. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was here four years ago and I couldn't understand your words because yeah. I didn't feel it. And now I know I am it. And it, it is me. And I understand it because I am it. Thank you so much from the okay. core of my being. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Can I come and hug you, please? <laughs> okay, come, come, come. <laughs> and uh, music is coming to me. Prem and uh... <laughs> <laughs> You're a strong guy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this has been such a long time. Microphone, everything. <laughs> right. Thank you, my love. It's a beautiful day The sun is shining so bright I know love is the only way So it's a beautiful day I don't have nothing on my mind, oh. and I don't care what he say. No, what he say. I don't need him to waste 
my time No It's a beautiful day And it's a wonderful life Lord, I hope you can see That there is no need for stress or strife No, it's a wonderful life I don't have anywhere to I don't care for my rights Not for my rights And I don't have anyone to see No, it's a wonderful life And it's a beautiful day The sun is shining so bright I don't have nothing else to say No, it's a beautiful day It's a beautiful day It's a beautiful day You know, it is the perfect song <laughs> because uh, the sun is yourself. The sun is shining here, so it is always a beautiful day. Yeah. The sun of consciousness is always shining. When you know this, it's always a beautiful day.